Page numbers we've seen, but just to clarify, use P if it's a single page. If it's two or more pages, you use PP. And in both cases, you have that period there. Remember the period at the end. No space before, one space after. So here we have a perfect example. This is an article inside of a... This is an article inside of a... Oh, it looks like a chapter. It's a, uh, your neck. The thing around your neck. Yeah, this is a chapter inside of a book. And the publisher is Alfred A. Knopf Publishers. And it's 2009. And this is the pages of that chapter. Baron Naomi S. Redefining Reading. So we see the quotation. So this is, this is what? This is a chapter or an article. And it's inside this journal. So it's an article inside a journal. And then these are the pages of the article. The article begins on 193 and ends on 200. Now, of course, if you're going to cite things that are online, it would be best to use the Document Object Identifier, or the DOI. And if you use the DOI, there's no space after it. You have a colon, and no space after the colon, then you write the DOI. So if you're online recently these days, I think, and into the future, almost all published articles that are online do have a DOI, and you can go ahead and use them. Does everything have a DOI? No, not everything does. But what is the goal of the DOI? To make it easy to find in the future, because the company that's making this DOI is guaranteeing or promising to try to make that address always work. I'm sure you have experience of you find something on the net and then a few years later it's gone or the location has changed, the address would be different. We don't want that in our reference list, do we? We want the reference list to be able to last forever or at least for a very long time. What about extra information or optional information? Well, one optional information is that city of publication. Now, the MLA used to normally have city of publication included, but now they discourage that. Now, sometimes if you have older published works, that is before 1900, then you can have the city. Because in other words, if the book is older, the publishers may be difficult to find, and this is more information to help find it. However, look at this example here, which is J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Lendon, Bloomsbury, 1997. Well, this book is 1997. Do you really need to have Lendon? And the answer is no. MLA's new guidelines is you really do not need to have that for books that are more modern. Only books that are really old would you have that. And that's, when we say old, we're talking about over 100 years, pre-1900. Another special case is radio broadcast. So here are radio broadcasts. Now radio broadcast and podcast, you need to have some extra information, don't you? So here, this is the name of a radio show. And this radio show is narrated by Terry Gross. She's the announcer. Who does it come from? It comes from National Public Radio. So they are the publishers or the producers. This is the date that it was aired, not the date I listened, but the date it was released, and I am citing the transcript. So this is optional information here. I'm telling you more about this source, and in this case, this source was not just the radio show, but the actual transcription. That is, the words were posted online, and I got those words. So that's extra information, optional information. The time you need optional information is to help people understand what is the source and where is the source from. So here's another example. Atwood Margaret, so she's, the, she's an author. Silence the Screaming, this is inside something bigger. What is it inside? It's inside Boundaries of the Imagination Forum. So that's some kind of meeting. And that meeting is the MLA Annual Convention. So here we have a convention or a conference and we can add extra information to help the reader find it. So we have the exact date, and then here is the location. 
But at the end, we have this optional information just to help the reader understand what is this. This is an address. That is a speech she gave. Margaret Atwood gave an address, a speech, at this conference or this convention. Now, another thing we can add is called date of access. And here we can see it used in a reference. Access 23 July 2013. Please pay attention to following that MLA style, which is the day, the month, the year, with no commas anywhere, just writing them straight out. So here we have the name under the gun, which is a episode of a television show. The television show is called Pretty Little Liars. It's season four. It's episode six. It's from the production company ABC Family. And when was it on TV? 16th of July, 1913. So really right there, that's everything we need. That's kind of everything. We really don't need to go further. That would be normal. But you know, we can add optional elements. That is another container, for example. And this is a great example because I watched this, but I did not watch it in 2013. I watched it at a different date. I watched it at a date of my convenience because I watched it online, let's say. So here we're going to go ahead and add optional element, which would be Netflix, which is the title of the net website I got it from. Here is the address of where I retrieved it from. And then here is the day I accessed it. And you can be as detailed as you want. But this is letting us know that's when you got, when you actually saw it and where you saw it. Now, how is that information useful? That is to help us understand in case in the future there's some confusion. I found this source, but maybe what you saw and what you wrote about is not exactly what I am seeing. This helps me to get more and more specific. All right, we're getting really detailed, aren't we? I think that it's easy to overload on this stuff. The key of the MLA is that guideline they give you. You have a container inside another container inside another container. More and more detail is good. More detail is better. But don't go crazy with it, right? The ones we looked at at the beginning, the first few, a single author, multiple authors, those are the most common. Journals and books or chapters inside books and then sometimes chapters that have authors and books that have editors. Those are the most common things you're going to be using. The other stuff is more special, but you want to get it right if you're going to do it. Don't put something in from a website. Don't put something in from a television show or from a streaming podcast and you don't cite it correctly because it's not that hard. You just need to get those MLA rules. Good, life, good luck with your reference list. This is giving me a tongue twister talking about all this stuff. Good luck with your reference list and really do the best job you can to be professional.